Welcome back to the Tower Talks uh, Spokesman Review podcast. Uh, my name is Alina Perry. I am the K-12 education reporter. Um, and with me today, I've got the superintendent of Cheney Public Schools, Ben Fernie. Ben, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Alina. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Um, so today, uh, we're going to talk about Cheney Public Schools' bond that's going to be on November ballots. Um, kind of the history, what got them there, um, what they're trying to pay for with it, and why they need it, all that good stuff. Um, so Ben, just to start, I'm hoping that you can start us off by telling a little, telling a little bit about your school district. Well, again, thank you for having me here. It's a, it's a great opportunity to work with you. I uh, highly respect you as a reporter and the spokesman Thanks. and the work you do for education. Um, so Cheney Public Schools, uh, we're a unique school district, so we cover 380 square miles. And I don't think a lot of people realize, I mean, as you leave Spokane and go west from basically Highway 195 as you top Sunset Hill all the way out to Tyler, Fish Trap area is all Cheney. We go north through Airway Heights, south to Rosalia and St. John. And so... Geographically, we're a really large school district. Within that school district, we have two cities, two muni municipalities. We have Airway Heights and Cheney. And so, uh, you know, when I was first hired in Cheney, it was described as three distinct communities. And so we had the city of Cheney and we have the city of Airway Heights. And then we have what's called the West Plains. And I, so I think a lot of people um, understand Cheney Public Schools as a lot of West Plains and a, a lot of areas you drive through, so that's unincorporated. And so because of our size, our geographical footprint, you know, our buses drive over 5,000 miles a day, okay. yeah. over 880,000 miles a year, not including, uh, you know, trips and athletics and activities. And we serve, you know, over 5,000 meals a day. So our student body population right now is we're about 53, 5,400 and growing. We've been growing uh, for a while now. Uh, we serve about, well, we have about 800 full-time employees, almost 1,000 get paychecks, depending you know when you count coaches and everything else like that. So we have a large staff, a pretty large staff. We're the fourth largest in terms of student enrollment with 5,400. So we kind of sit between Mead is around 10,000 and then, you know, East and West Valley are, th th you know, 3,500-ish. And so we're kind of in a unique spot. We're geographically big. Um, I think th our, our geographical footprint makes us not seem as big as we are because we're spread out quite a bit. But yeah, that's, that's uh, our school district, pretty unique. It's an amazing place. We have amazing kids, amazing families, lots of support. And so it's a great place to be. Nice. OK. Well, um, yeah, just to kind of put that into context, like you said, fourth highest enrolled. But in terms of uh, just sweeping, you know, square footage area, uh, you're the, the largest in the county. So uh, there's it's a big, diff big district relative to the amount of kids that are there. Um, yeah. So so I think some people have asked. You know what's the biggest, and I think I don't know the biggest. I, I believe I believe that we're the one of the top five busing school districts because, as you go into some school districts, there's not roads like in the middle of the, or I should say, west side of the state. You know, there's mountains and things, and they're they're all part of a school district, but they may not serve kids there. Mm -hmm. Where we we have kids spread out all over the 380 square miles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's just jump into it then. Um, so this bond that's going to be on November ballots, we're looking at uh, $72 million principal to be repaid over 21 years. Um, and your estimated tax rate right now, uh, it would cost an estimated at 45 cents per 1000 in assessed property value. Uh, if passed, that's the amount that would be added on <coughs> to uh, the tax rate that includes the levy um, and that good stuff. Um, so let's just start with, I guess, uh, tell me what you plan to do with this funding. You know, if it passes, what are your what are your dreams and fantasies for the school district? So the largest portion of the $72 million bond is for a new elementary school in Airway Heights. And depending on, you know, a 500 student uh, elementary school, when you consider all, all of the pieces that come to it, is pricey. It's, you know, it's up upper, it's 49, 50 million for a building like that. And so the bond we're running right now is the same amount as we ran last February. So it's the same. We didn't add anything to it, but we got more specific about some things. And so the main portion of the bond is for the overcrowding that we're having. Um, Airway Heights is one of the fastest growing suburbs in the country, um, according to a report that came out. And so this school 
the 50 million, well, the 49, 49, 50 million of it is really for that elementary. We already have the land purchased. Um, it's ready to go. We just need to get that support to be able to get that in. And so that's a, up to about a 500 student elementary building. The other portions of it is um, we're growing as well. And so we need to buy land. And so a piece of this bond is to be able to purchase land because the price for land isn't going down. And so when you look at elementary schools, they, they require about 10, 11 acres for an elementary school. Uh, middle schools are around 30, 30 acres. And then high schools are 50 to 60 acres. And so as we continue to grow and we look to the, to the future, um, buying those, you know, that size of land for those areas, it, you know, as the communities grow, developments grow, the available land that we can purchase um, becomes more challenging. And we also <clears throat> are unique in the sense that between Highway 2 and I-90, we have Spokane International Airport and we also have Fairchild. And so really between I-90 and, and Highway 2, it's it's called airport overlays. Mm -hmm. And so the schools aren't built in airport overlays, which then kind of limits some of the land that we, we would have to be able to purchase and and, and uh, build schools on for the future. So, so a portion of it's the school, portion of it's land, and then we have some real upgrades that are needed in our school district. So one of two schools in particular, we need to look at their bus loops, their parent mm -hmm. pickup and bus loops. And so one of those schools is Salnave Elementary, which is to the west of Cheney. Uh, we need a new bus loop there to really separate the congestion that's happening in Salnave and keep kids from, and parents, um, from getting backing out and being in the bus areas. And then also Windsor Elementary needs a bus loop. And the whole idea behind bus loops is to try to send, to get the buses um, separate from staff or parent pickup in, in totality. That's the goal. And so those are the two bus loop areas that we're focused on. The other two areas that the bond also is gonna hit with those two schools is their kitchens. Mm -hmm. And so this thing called the Community Eligibility Program, and you might hear the word CEP, it's great. Our students receive uh, lunch, breakfast and lunches for free. And so our buildings were never built um, to serve as many kids as we're serving. So it's not that there was ever any bad planning. Mm -hmm. It's just that let's say you had 30% of the kids take hot lunch. Now we're seeing double and triple that. Well, not triple because that'd be over. But, <laughs> you know, you're seeing a lot more kids eat. And so those schools, those particular schools, kitchens, were not built to be able to serve that many students. And so there's some significant upgrades in those areas. And then really the bond focuses then on a, a, the final areas of the high school. Mm -hmm especially outside. So we're a large 3A high school. And, and so we've, you know, we grew over the years and have grown into the GSL. And so our stands need upgrades uh, on both ends. We don't fit everybody in our current home stands, including the band that's been very successful. So they're on the mm -hmm. track. And then on the far side, our visitor bleachers, as we now are, you know, hosting large 3A, 4A, some are 3A schools, don't fit in the bleachers on that side and we need ADA accessibility to those. We need to upgrade our locker rooms that were from the 90s. Ooh. And then finally, I would think one really thing that I'm proud of about our school district is our maintenance and operations. Mm. They do a fantastic job maintaining all of our buildings. And so what's happened is, let's take a school like Windsor, or you could take Sunset, <clears throat> excuse me, or several other elementary schools, and the core of them is from the 50s. And so then you have additions to those, and then you have more additions to our most recent addition in 2017. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the insides, when you walk through the building, it's almost like a history lesson on renovations, because <laughs> you can kind of tell you know, when certain ones were renovated and not. And our goal is to really unify the buildings so that you can't really tell. I mean, you're always going to be able to tell a little bit, but, you know, the carpet and, and the walls and the roof, the ceilings, just to make sure that they all tie in so students are getting that continuity in the building. And finally, with the, those renovations, what happens as you continue to, to build and maintain, which our maintenance department does a great job on, is our HVAC systems have a hard time mm -hmm. keeping up. So if you think about the structures of buildings internally, HVAC systems don't always 
keep up. And so we have several buildings that um, are at end of life with their big, huge maintenance, um, the chillers, coolers, boilers that are at end of life. They're, they're past their cycle. And so, you know, that's not what we want to have happen. And it's going to take they're not they're It's going to take quite a bit to fix those. And so in, in one case, uh, our um, maintenance director, Rich Brown, said that they have to cr- they have to when they order parts they no longer make they have to make the part oh my gosh so it's like three four five times the price and yeah. so they're keeping the things alive but we really do need to be able to upgrade those okay and it's kind of one of those things that uh you know so my wife and i we, we put a new roof on our house super expensive but nobody ever comes over and says hey ben stacy your house looks <laughs> your roof looks great on the house yeah those are the kinds of things those are the upgrades that we also need in our buildings to keep them rolling Gotcha. Okay, so you're looking to replace some of the HVAC systems that are old and require ancient parts that have to be made fresh. Yes, that are end of life, okay. past end of life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's get to the new elementary school because I think that's really interesting to me. Could you talk about, like, um, why that's needed? I know I know, Cheney and Airway Heights, that, that whole area is expecting just, like, a huge population boom um, in the next uh I don't know, 10 years or so, you got the uh, Air Force space there, you got Amazon, you know, there's a lot of industry mm-hmm. coming in, a lot of new development. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So Sunset Elementary is our only school in Airway Heights. Wow, okay. So our school district that covers 380 square miles, two cities, it's the one school in Airway, it is the one, Sunset Elementary. It's also our largest elementary school in, two, in terms of enrollment. Mm to where students that live within the boundary that, that would go to Sunset, there's not enough room, so they, they're they bused to different school districts. So, uh, not school districts, schools. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we keep them. <laughs> it's, yeah. So some of, them, uh, some of them go to Snowden Elementary, some of them go to Windsor Elementary that would be, um, that would, and we'd like them to be able to go to Sunset. There's just not room for it. So it's our largest elementary. And so the other thing that we want to be able to do is you know, Sunset has our highest uh, amount of folks that can walk to school. Families and kids can walk to school. Mm-hmm. And so a, another school in Airway Heights creates a school that, that is available for the city, you know, for people to walk to. Uh, there's always bus, there is always some bus routes, but overall it's built where the kids are. And when you build schools where the kids are and the families are, it's a lot easier to, to make sure that how they get there, you know, a lot, there'd be a lot, of, a lot of walk zones there. Yeah. And you already have land for this new elementary school, Correct. right? Correct. It's okay. on First and Craig, and so the land's already there. There's a sign if you want to go check it out. <laughs> it says Future School of, you know, Future Elementary for Cheney Public Schools. So the land's there. They're actually the developers. Um, there's housing already going in in that area uh, adjacent to the school or really close to the school. So they're building around it. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there a way you could, like, put a number to, to this overcrowding? I know you said it's, like, the highest enrolled, but you know – how many kids are there? What percent um, uh, over capacity is it at right now? Do you know anything uh, like that? Sunset? Yeah. Uh, I, what, I, what I can tell you is if we build the school, we would, we would be taking kids out of portables. Okay. So we wouldn't be using portables across the district. And if that school is built, we could, it, would be, it would be filled. We wouldn't need to, I mean, not, maybe not at 100% capacity, but it's filled enough that we could run it. Okay. And you would how fast do you think would you expect it to get to that 100% capacity? I mean, I think I saw somewhere there's like an extra 200 elementary school yeah. kids you're expecting by 2027, 28 school year? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot. That's almost half of an elementary school, right? Yes. Yes. And so, well, a piece of that comes into our facility planning team. Mm. If you want to talk about like how we got to where we got. Yeah, let's do that. And what that looked like, because I think that's important and relative to your question. Mm-hmm. And so... Let's walk back in about, about oh, a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, well, almost two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we reached out, and what we realized is in Cheney, with the three distinct communities of Cheney, Airway Heights, and the West Plains, and really the West Plains isn't just a single, it, we call it one, you know, one of our three distinct communities, but it's, it's really made up of a lot of different communities. I mean, mm-hmm. there's Eagle Ridge, Qualshin, a Big Sky, West Terrace, and then there's, there's areas by Garden Springs. So there's a lot of communities within that community, but it's really an unincorporated area. So we knew 
going in that what we wanted was this to be a grassroots community-based effort from mm -hmm. our families to give us input on how we wanted to move forward. And so uh, we got, we had a raffle really, but we wanted five parents out of each of the distinct communities and then really important stakeholders that knew those areas to be part of that committee. And then we hired a consultant, Phil Crocker, to work with this group of 20 plus people to educate them on functional adequacy of buildings. And so functional adequacy is, uh, if, you, if you walk into an art room, is there carpet? Are the rooms functional for, for educational setting? That's functional adequacy. And then also physical conditions of the buildings. What do they look like as we go through all the different buildings and, and what do we need? And the, functional, or the physical conditions came up with HVAC being a, a high priority for us to be able to go and work on. And so this committee worked for over six months. They became experts. Mm -hmm. Big thanks to John Berger and Sunny Weathers that helped lead that. And really they, they had to tackle what is, it that, what is the best step for Cheney Public Schools moving forward. Uh, one of the things, the frameworks that they set that I appreciate is they didn't set in three years we're going to do this, in two years we're going to do this. They set it based on metrics and enrollment. And so we created on our website, you can see it, the enrollment at the schools. And so it tells you if you're what capacity we're at. And, and what they, they that committee came up with is at about when you hit 95% capacity for elementary schools or secondary or high schools, that signals the time to, that then, then you, it signals to run a bond. Um, and so at that time, with that group, long story even longer, that group <laughs> decided we need an elementary school automatically because we'll get kids out of portables and we'll be rolling with an elementary. They really were looking at maybe two elementaries and decided against it because we didn't know where the second elementary would go yet because the land, mm -hmm. and so we needed to get land. So they selected one elementary, get kids out of portables, we already have land in Airway Heights. They also tackle something that's unique to us is that as these cohorts are going through our elementaries, it's actually our middle schools that'll fill up second. Okay. And so they came up with a creative idea that I hadn't thought of it was um, a secondary school that's 612 that could potentially become that could be a 612 school that becomes a middle school or becomes a high school, depending on the amount of land you could get to build it on. Okay. But we didn't determine what that would be until we actually get to the point where we would need to purchase land and run, run a bond um, for that. So that kind of helps answer the questions of how we got here, about where it is and why it's there. The, the whole, so you have three c community parents coming together, stakeholders saying, we need to put this in Airway Heights. Mm -hmm. It's growing, let's put the, the buildings where the kids are. So I hope that helps answer some yeah. of that, but that's the bigger picture of how we ended up here. And then, and then we ran the bond um, last February. So about a year ago this time, we're getting ready. So the committee, that facility planning committee went to the board, presented it to the board. The board accepted at the end of June, a year ago, and then it's go time on running a bond and a capital levy and an educational programs and operations levy. And so that's a lot of, when you think about those three things on, on a ballot to educate folks, bonds are for buildings, or 60% super majority, different than the EP&O levy that's 50% plus one in the capital levy. And our capital levy was a technology levy. Some, mm -hmm. pe some folks run levies for different re uh, capital levies for projects. Ours really was around technology and, and the, 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 the Chromebooks that we have. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that kind of leads nicely into my next question, uh, which is um, not to, like, rehash this out, um, but you did have a bond on ballots in February. Uh, it didn't pass. Uh, it didn't get to that 60%, like you said, super majority that bonds need to pass. Uh, both your levies did. Um, but but what's – you got another bond coming back in November. What's what's different about this bond what, why, why do you hope this one might pass, whereas, you know, the last one obviously didn't have success? Appreciate the question. So we, we worked really, really hard on those three measures, and we had great community support. And our EP and O levy, education programs and operations levy, passed. I think it was over 55%, 55% ish. Really good support for that. Our capital or our technology capital levy is at almost 59%, like 58% and change. And then our bond was 54 and change, almost 55% support, which regionally was really good. Yeah. And it, you know, we need to decide, okay, 
what can we learn from this? So we're mm -hmm. super appreciative of our, our community. Again, like I said at the beginning, our community supports our schools in, in big ways. And, and so what we did was the first thing we wanted to do was collect information from everybody. So we sent out a postcard with a thought exchange. If people didn't want to do the thought exchange, they could call in. There's lots of different ways. We just wanted to gather input on, you know, what went well, what could we have done better? And then we sent a survey, and that was a survey that had those parts. Hey, what went well? What didn't go as well? What could we do different next time? Yeah. We also did a deep dive into Airway Heights. And so we met with lots of folks from Airway Heights. Jacob Powers, he's an amazing man. He runs the Hub, the Heights Church called The Hub. He does Little Guys Wrestling, huge community member. Talked to Andy Gardner, Chief Richmond. Uh, we met with Albert Tripp and a city council member, Jennifer Morton. Just really wanted to deep dive and unpack, you know, what went well and what can we do different next time. Mm -hmm. And we so we took all the survey data that went to everybody. We did a deep dive into Airway Heights. Um, and then we also had a consultant just take a look at overall and work with us and just say, okay, what did we do well and what can we do different based on the results from the survey, based on the information we got as we really went out and talked to folks. And the thing that we learned that I found interesting was we did a really good job on the how. We did a great job. I mean, we couldn't have worked any harder. And so we, we like the process, the, the grassroots community-based efforts, the road shows, the meetings, all went really well. But where we could tweak and focus more is on the impact, mm. the why, and what does that bring us? And it was really, it was really, it was good because it's about getting it right, not being right. And mm -hmm. so as we looked at this, we if we're going to tweak that next 5%, what does that really mean? And so we did. We, we instead of doing a whole bunch of, you know, slideshows, we created a, a four-minute and under five minute video that really do, does a good job of explaining the whole thing and the the back background and then also hey what are the impacts what what does it what is this going to bring us um, and so that was also important for us when we talk about impact on hvac well what is the impact on hvac what is the impact on students and staff and learning environments and so we're able to do that through that process and so the road shows have become a lot more simple because we we can play the video and then we have the one pager and and then we answer questions. Yeah. Um, okay. You mentioned you mentioned a survey uh, that you sent out to folks. Um, could you share with me just briefly? Are there any like uh, details like from that survey? Like, uh, did people have anything to say about like why they didn't support the bond or like what what motivations may be there or like specifically like what uh, you might do differently to appeal to more voters? Both of the, well, yes. And so the number one piece that we got back from the survey was that the, the first was the taxes, the cost, mm -hmm. which is a real thing. And the second one was be more specific about what we get, okay. which led us to impact. Okay. Like, so, so we have more detail. Um, so for example, we have renderings now of the bus loops at Salnave and Windsor. That's mm -hmm. more detail showing people what they want. So we listened, really good feedback. We have renderings of the high school, what that would look like. We did not make a rendering of the elementary school for, for a specific reason. And it's because once the bond passes, then we're gonna go into design and what it can look like. There, the, It's a double-edged sword. If, if you put up something that, because what we want for the building as a Ford or a Chevy, we don't need a, a <laughs> Porsche. We want a, just a good, solid building. Yeah. And so what can happen we've, is that if you put up a rendering, people will say, well, I don't want that. Mm. Or both ways. Well, that's not enough or that's too much. And so we really want to step back and get input on what that building can look like. One of the things we did learn from Airway Heights is they don't have a really a place for performances or, or music for local folks. And so we, we do want to make a larger gym in the school that then can connect to the, the cafeteria so, so people could use that and rent or well, facility, use, facility use it. 
you know, yeah. agreement to be able to go and use that for performances for the community. And so I think those are things that we listened to and said, okay, we need to hold off on the specific rendering of the building versus showing more specifically what they get. So that's why there's renderings of the, the other areas other than the building. But that was very intentional mm -hmm. um, not to have one of the building. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. And then you mentioned the taxes uh, being another reason. That's something uh, I've heard pretty much from every school district sure. who I've talked to. They all say their community, um, you know, the economy, it's in a rough spot right now. We're all kind of feeling those strains. Um, can you talk about the amount the, the full, the $72 million on this bond is the same as it was in February. But there is a little, the rate, you're expecting it to be a little bit different. Um, could you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So so taxes and schools is is complex. What? In, no. in the least so easy. Sense. <laughs> and so for the, for the bond, for this bond currently, the estimated tax rate is $0.45 cents per thousand. Mm-hmm. Previously, last February, I think it was 53 cents, but it almost was like 52, 53 cents per thousand. So it dropped seven or eight cents since it ran in February. But the amount didn't change. Right. So the amount is still that it's not a new it's not a new bond. Mm -hmm. It's just more specific about what they can get. Yeah. OK. Um, and then that was because of um, the assessed value in your school district. It, it rose, right? So like the kind of like a spread the wealth type situation. Is that why? Yeah. So the way the what's what's really a positive thing about Cheney is that if you let's say you just have a pot of if if this is the 72 million mm -hmm. and then you have X amount of people that live within the school district are paying on that. Well, as more and more people move into the school district, there's more and more people paying on that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it relieves the, the amount that each person pays, the more people that you have coming in. Mm -hmm. And so when Amazon moves in and they're our highest tax pay, you know, tax um, business, that that the what what Amazon puts into taxes for the Cheney Public Schools is takes the weight off of what would just be our folks that aren't. Amazon and all industry really it's not just and we have a lot of great industry in our school district but that's the one that's the largest that people think about it's our highest um, tax paying business and so that relieves the, the pressure for a lot of other people and that's how that can go down but uh, but in general as assess value goes up your your rate goes down so the misconception is mm -hmm. if my tax rate goes up then the school is getting more money. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't matter if we're talking about a levy or a bond. Levies are for learning, bonds are for buildings. Um, as your assessed value goes up, your rate goes down because we're only collecting a certain amount of money. And so all the rates are estimated and can change based on assessed value. Right, as, as we saw from February to November, right? Like it, there was a, a little bit of a shift there in that, that seven or eight cents um, in the rate. Um, could you talk a little bit about um, what's at stake here in this situation if November comes around and, um, you know, we have another February moment where the bond doesn't pass? Um, what What's next for the district? What are your next moves? Um, is it another bond down the line? Is it um, maybe another capital levy? Um, is it just a kind of leave things and see how they go? You know, what what's next if, if this doesn't pass? Well, we're, it's going to pass, it's right? Gonna pass. That's okay. the, it's going to pass. <laughs> uh, I think something important why this is critical right now for us as a school district is the way that that bonds work with this uh, thing called validation. Mm -hmm. I don't want to bore you with details, so you can stop me. No, I like the validation. That's an important conversation. So yeah. So levies don't require validation, and bonds do, mm -hmm. and so. The validation means you have to reach at least 40 percent turnout from the election, bef from the general election. Mm -hmm. And so the general election, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, it's a presidential election. Really? <laughs> in November. And so we, it always has a higher turnout. This one will probably even have a higher turnout mm -hmm. than a lot of other um, elections. And so you, every election after that, February, April, August, I think those are the three. There might February, be February, April, August, November. There's four. Well, then November so, is your general. Right. If you're running a bond, 
you have to reach 40% of the people that turned out. So we had Corey Plager from DA Davidson come and talk to the board when we, hey, when do we want to run this bond? We just ran it. What are our next steps? And so in that case, what he showed us was based on our past turnout in elections, that if we don't run it and if, if we chose not to run it in November and another time, mm-hmm. that we would have a, a significant risk of, of passing and not validating. Right, right. And so we are running in November. And one of the things, though, that's positive about it is we want voter turnout. We want people to be able to turn out. Uh-huh. And so we think that that's going to help us. But, you know, you never really know until the day of the election. But we do think that that's going to help us. Yeah. But other than that, we'd have to the, the we'd have to figure it out. We haven't done much planning after it because we're just putting all of our time and effort into making sure that people know what they're going to get. Yeah. And really getting out and educating folks on what that looks like. It's a little easier uh, in terms of communication because we're not talking about the EPNO levy right. or capital levy. It's just straight bond. Mm-hmm. What are your questions about the bond? Gotcha. What are some questions that you've heard? I mean. Briefly, like you, you mentioned that from people, like, are there any like misconceptions or like uh, like common like queries from folks that uh, you might want to address or clear up on this platform? I most of the people that I talk to are like, hey, yeah, we need a school. So, <laughs> uh, but I know that's not everybody. I know mm-hmm. that I, I for sure, and I understand and sympathize. I understand that you know taxes affect folks, and mm-hmm. it's not easy times right now for a lot of families, and and to respect that and that's why we that's why we get a chance to be able to say hey here's what you're going to get out of this whole thing and if it's hopefully we do a good job of you know investing in our kids in the future and and that's where where we just need a little push Mm -hmm. really i mean we had good we had really good support for the bond in fact some of the things i've heard is that people didn't realize we didn't pass it oh you know like (laughs) Because we we're over fifty percent, we're almost yeah. almost fifty five percent. They're like we didn't pass, and so that's kind of been a thing of, you no know, bonds are sixty percent, right? Super majority. Right. Um, okay. Well, I think that's everything. Um, I wanted to run by on bond stuff. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask, or any like uh, blind spots, or um, anything that we did talk about that you want to circle back to, or um, yeah, free space to kind of say what you'd like right now. Okay. Well, not about the bond. Okay. But yeah. I, but I am really excited because because the bond is a big piece for our school district. I'm also really excited about our strategic plan. Okay. That we're launching, and so we've we've taken some time mm-hmm. because it's really a community based. It's a stu- student input, staff input, parent input um, around this strategic plan that came up with six different goals. Mm-hmm. And we put it off because of the community meetings we're having around the bond. We didn't want to confuse the two. Right. And so we did wait a little while, but it finalized in uh, last spring. The board accepted that, um, the strategic plan. But what I'm really excited about is that it's a living document. So mm-hmm. it's not like a three-ring binder that's going to gather dust. It's really a year-to-year. We have some goals, you know, three to five years out, but it's really about measuring what we're doing this year and then making adjustments and showing progress. Yeah. So super excited about that. And I would say, finally, that, you know, kids today are incredible. And I know there's lots of different narratives out there about our students of today. They make decisions. Uh, they have to make decisions earlier. Mm-hmm. They have access to information earlier. You know, I was in a third grade classroom and just amazed at just the math that they're learning. It's just really, and that takes a whole, that takes an amazing teacher, makes an amazing system, you know, teaching and learning and focus. Um, and so it's just really amazing to see what our kids today are doing because it's, it's, it is, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Great note to end it on. Um, well, thank you so much for coming out today uh, to the Spokesman Review Tower, all the way from the sweeping school district of Cheney. Um, yeah, this was a great conversation, and I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Of course.